I've been told we approach the angelic when we sing, that singing is semblance of our second self after life goes. When we hear the damned across the chasm throats raked necrotic, damned who can't sing, can't hum a tune, vocals all marbled, standing in blackened pools of what is right, what is truth, not singing at all, not one peep in the key of C, no tempo rubato, the damned who once loved power, and power bangs a rackety piano like a naughty child. Power corrupts the piano, corrupts the human, beetles itself under the armor of right, the armpit of alibi, the pretense of protection. So why, why put that on God? Why call God powerful? Pray for God's power, which then makes God corrupt, a God who rivers the blood of enemies. We make a power God, a symbol for the righteous, a flag for beetles who march and grump under the rule of feckless men who foster rage, so unlike the grass roots who sing to crumble power, who sing across the chasm in the afterlife, who sing to a God who has never been power, who through Jesus spoke and Jesus sang to us like Rumi, to stick our heads out of the sack of power. See what God has done, which isn't power, isn't vindictive, isn't symbol. In the paucity of words, God restores. God rebinds a ruptured people, restores the ripped bladder of injustice to a bladder that bulges wine drunk large and red under a white gauzy moon, under a God who moons back to those who want to be restored, want restoration, who want hearts that sing.